Hail Warrior. The healer is part of the Holy Trinity in expedition and trial explorations. Your main goal is to keep your teammates alive. The primary target is your tank and then your DPS buddies. This build will make sure you have the highest chance of survival and PvE content. I will show you the beginner variation to the best in slot. First, we will talk about three essential perks for any healer in PV. These are Health, Enchanted Ward, and four stacks of Refreshing. Health is good in all situations as it increases your maximum HP, and it is the best way to protect yourself against any form of damage. Enchanted Ward is very useful as the most common form of the enemy's offense is light or heavy attack. Elemental Aversion is a good substitution for these perks, however, compared to light and heavy attacks, spells are much less frequent. Therefore, the Enchanted Ward is a better form of protection. The last perk that you want to have at maximum stacks is Refreshing. A lower spell cooldown means that you heal more often. Let's take a look at almost the best in slot gear that is very strong in PV situations. It is your faction gear. It is health, an enchanted ward, and refreshing. All of the perks that you need. If you buy all 5 gear slots you already have the very strong gear to complete at least M2 as the recommended gear level is 675. I am fully aware that you will waste a perk slot because you will use more than 4 stacks of refreshing but the return for having health and an enchanted ward as your other two perks is much more valuable than not having them. These items are meant as a placeholder until you get a higher gear score with health and an enchanted ward or you will get an artifact of your choice. On the topic of artifacts, I recommend two of them. One is featherweight. This one allows us to wear two heavy gear pieces on the head, gloves, or feet. This will give us more armor overall and we will take much less damage and the game will be easier to play. So our gear will now look like this. You will have a heavy or light head, featherweight as your chest piece, then heavy or light gloves, light pants, and heavy or light feet. Up to a maximum of two heavy pieces if you want to stay in light equip load. The next artifact that I would use as a healer is Nimble Coat. It is a medium chest piece that gives us more refreshing. With 4 stacks, plus the unique perk we will be sitting on a maximum of 24% cooldown reduction. This will allow us to spam more skills and in certain situations with refreshing move on your weapon and life staff passive you can have almost 0 cooldowns on your skills. I will now cover some of the names items that are very strong and can replace your faction gear. One of them is Azoth Crystal Set that can be crafted with Mutation Materia in the Gypsum Kiln. This set gives you an enchanted ward and refreshing. It is guaranteed a gear score of 700 and the third perk is randomly picked, with health having a 15% chance of being picked. But do not worry, you can change the perks later with some other items as well. The other set that is easy to get can help you, and it has two perks you want to focus on is the Empress Joe's set. It is health and refreshing as its primary perks, and the Enchanted Ward has a rather small percentage of rolling at 3%, but you can change it later. The same is with the previous gear set. With the body gear covered, let us focus on the jewelry. My amulet of choice that is always good is Passage of Time. It has a constitution attribute. It is guaranteed a gear score of 700 when it is crafted from a gypsum kiln. The primary perk is Refreshing and Stamina Recovery. As a third perk, you can pick the element ward of the mutation you are doing, or you could just select Health. It will not be as perfect as element ward perks such as Fire or Abyssal, but it will do. As for the ring, I like using Vivify. It has Focus as its attributes and has Refreshing and Healing Breeze as its primary perks. I like taking Sacred as the third perk as this gives us more healing. My favorite jewelry artifact is Endless Thirst. It gives you a big potion drink in a time of need. Usually, you do not need to drink one, but when you do, you need a strong one. As a third perk, I like picking a Healing Heart as it heals us when we use the Heart Rune. When it comes to Heart Runes, you have two options. Stalwart Heart Rune of Stone Form or Brutal Heart's Rune of Grasping Vines. Stone Form is more defensive and Vines are a more offensive option. I would use Stone Form in critical situations. Vines I would use in more offensive situations when the DPS of the group needs to be as high as possible. With all the gear covered now, let's talk about the weapons. For the Life Staff, you have many options that can be crafted from a gypsum kiln. You just pick your favorite one. Of all the three options, it's hard to pick the one staff that is the best. The corrupted one can be farmed in Merkguard, and the other two can be crafted with material in a gypsum kiln. When it comes to the skills, 
I would use the AE healing skills such as Sacred Ground, Orb of Protection, and Beacon. I would cycle through them, and then swap to your other weapon. This playstyle would come in handy if all of your teammates are melee DPS. I would slot in the Divine Embrace if you have one or more ranged ones as it has very strong single-target healing. Remember that your light attacks also can heal. As our secondary weapon, I love taking Life Taker. It is a Void Gauntlet artifact. Its unique perk is that it applies Disintegrate on ranged attacks on both weapons. Disintegrate is a dot and a 10% rend that stacks up to 3 times, giving us up to 30% rend. As the final perk, I would take Blessed as we are a healer and none of the weapon perks are suited for PV situations. Now let's take a look at the skill tree for the VG. The primary skills that I like taking is Oblivion. It gives you and your teammates 15% in power, among other buffs. Next, I would take the Orb as it heals your group and it applies Disintegrates to your enemies. I also like using the Blade for non-boss fights and Essence Rupture for the boss fight. With the general build covered, I will cover some general tips that will help you. When it comes to gems, each mutation has one element that is more prevalent, and generally you will want to slot in the gem that is resistant to it, however. I would just take the general elemental gem that has less resistance against one element, but has against many. In the long run, this is much cheaper than wasting your money on getting all your gems replaced each time you want to do a mutation. I would do that only if you do M2 or lower, however. M3 needs to be fully optimized. This was my take on the PV Healer build. The build is simple and very easy to get as a beginner, and you can freely unlock and upgrade it over time as you play. The link to the build will also be in the description below. If you like such content, you can give it a like and subscribe if you like more content like this one. The next video I will be working on is my take on the best PvE DPS builds so far. Stay tuned and have a nice day. Goodbye.